This week, giraffes do math, cannibal fish wash ashore, the runner who didn't stop, and the conductor who's not a duchess in disguise. Over here! Hey, 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 hey listen up! <coughs> no, 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 Nizzy! Nizzy Paloozy! Hello and welcome to Newsy Paloozy, the news poll for people who like to stay informed with a smile. Oh yes, we have another helping of wacky world news for you this week. I'm Leela. And I'm Lindy. And on Newsy Paloozy this week... A Spanish study reveals that giraffes use math to make predictions. Wild or what? Well, we'll tell you how. On the northwest coast of the U.S., cannibal fish from the twilight zone are washing ashore. You think I'm making this up, don't you? But no, this is not a storyline from a TV show, but real news, folks. We'll also have the heroic tale of the Cambodian runner who did not give up. And the oddball story of the Welsh conductor who was not a duchess in disguise. Alrighty then, let's unravel the wackiest of this week's world news. First up, it's the... Big News Story of the Week. Now, some of you might be familiar with that great children's book, Giraffes Can't Dance. Oh, I used to love that book. I know, it was always a favorite. So in case you're not familiar with it, it's about a giraffe... Named Gerald? Gerald the giraffe, yes, who's laughed at at a big jungle dance party because, well, giraffes are the world's tallest living land animals. They can grow up to like 18 feet, or 5.5 meters. That's taller than three adult humans. I know. They not only have exceedingly long necks, but also very long legs. So that means poor Gerald doesn't dance the way the other animals do. But then he meets a musical cricket and finds out that everyone can dance if they find the music they love. Ah, that's right. And sure enough, Gerald the giraffe can dance. And so well, the entire jungle goes to watch him in awe. Such a great story. Well, there's a part two. Only this is real life. Turns out giraffes can also do math. What? Yeah, so we've known for a while that different primates can do some basic math. And even some fish can count and bees can tell apart odd and even numbers, did you know? I did not know that. Impressive. But no one thought giraffes, which have quite a small brain for mammals, given their body size, that they might have a special ability to use simple math, well, statistics actually, to make predictions. Until now. Yep, some Spanish researchers gave some giraffes a math test. Oh, lucky them. Well, of course, they're animals, so there were no numbers or anything. Let me guess, there was food involved. Oh, yes, that's smart. Now that's the kind of math test I like. (laughs) Yeah, right? (laughs) So here's how it worked. They showed the giraffes two clear containers, each with yummy bright orange carrots, which giraffes love apparently, and green cucumbers, which they're not so crazy about. Now, one container had a higher proportion of the thing they loved. Carrots! Exactly. And the other one had more cucumbers. So here's where it gets interesting. The researcher would open one container with their right hand and take out one item, but not let the giraffe see. They kept it in a closed fist. Right. And then they did the same with the other container and their other hand. Bingo! Then they held both hands out to the giraffe to let them guess which hand was more likely to have their favorite orange carrot. Oh, so they had to size up the proportion of each container's contents and see which had a higher chance or probability of having a carrot. And could they? Oh, they could indeed. Of course, this experiment was done using several variations, but each time the giraffes were able to successfully choose the hand that picked from the container with the highest proportion of their favorite snack. Clever creatures. So a big brain is not necessarily a sign of a smart brain. You said it. And it might be that basic math might be more common in the animal kingdom than previously thought. And now, staying with animals, but the wetter variety, let's have a little more of this. It's the call of nature. Nature. Get on your safari suit or squeeze into your scuba gear. gear. And get ready to hop into a jeep or a submarine. Submarine. Because Mother Nature is calling. Nature. So, Leela. So, Mama. 
Have you heard of the lancet fish? I have not. Well, it's quite the fish, let me tell you. First of all, do you know what a lancet is? Uh, actually, I do not. <laughs> well, it's a small, broad surgical knife or blade, which is sharp on both sides and at the top. So, let me guess, this fish is pretty dangerous. Bingo! It's a predator, or some say... Cannibal! <laughs> exactly. But that's not all. It lurks in the depths of sea known as the Twilight Zone. But guess what? They're mysteriously washing up on the beaches of Oregon, a state in America's Northwest. Ooh, that sounds like we need to head to our West Coast reporter, Anna Kelly, for more on this story. You got it. Over to you, Anna. Thanks a lot, Leela. Yes, you would not want to run into one of these fish on a swim in Oregon. They might have pretty fins that look like the sail of a ship, but these large fish, who can grow up to seven feet long, also bulging eyes and fiercely sharp teeth that look like daggers, hence the name Lancet. Luckily for us, these cannibal fish usually lurk deep in the cold, dark, midwater ocean depths, known as the Twilight Zone. But not now, at least not for some unlucky ones. Oregon State Park officials say several of these fish have been spotted washed up on the shore in the last few weeks, and no one knows why. According to live science, there are three theories. One, the fish became injured or ill, so they couldn't swim very well and got pushed up to the shore. Two, a storm washed them in. Three, they have experienced a phenomenon known as temperature shock, where a fish is suddenly exposed to water that's much colder than they're used to. Question is, is this a fishy tale or just a Twilight Zone mystery? From the northwest coast of America, I'm Anna Kelly reporting for Newsy Paloozy. Hey, thanks a lot, Anna, for that story. Keep us posted on what happens. What's that? I'll tell you what. That's the halftime bell, which means it's time to hear what's making news around the rest of the world. Hold on tight. It's around, around the, the world, world in 80, 80 seconds. seconds. Oh, hold With 130 miles per hour winds, Cyclone Mocha rips through the South Asian countries of Myanmar and Bangladesh. While around 30 people have died so far, authorities say early storm warnings have saved thousands of lives, though many are still unaccounted for. The merits and pitfalls of artificial intelligence is being debated in the U.S. Capitol Hill, where senators are asking, will AI be a positive invention like the printing press or a negative one like the atom bomb? Testifying before a Senate committee is the creator of ChatGPT, who's calling on lawmakers to regulate AI. Staying with tech news, the European Union approves Microsoft's mega-purchase of video game maker Activision Blizzard, deciding the deal won't stifle competition. Some experts say the Microsoft-Activision merger is good news for cloud gaming platforms, but the blockbuster deal still has to pass through British and US regulators. And a pretty pair of old ceramic jars purchased at a London thrift store for $25 are actually worth a bit more than that. Because it turns out they actually date back to the 18th century King Dynasty and could sell for around $60,000. Well, thank you so much for that. Wait for it. Now, we wibbity wobbly zippy zap here. Of what's making headlines elsewhere in the world, Mama. <laughs> Anytime, speedy girl. And now... I'll be ready to play ball! Sports news! So it's not every day that the person who finishes last in a race becomes the most praised person in her country. But then again, it's not every day that someone not at her physical best enters a race anyway. A 5,000 meter or 3 mile race. And then very soon falls to the last place. And then, despite this... Yes, a massive downpour. 
And yet she still keeps going and doesn't give up. Which no one would have blamed her for, really, given the circumstances. But instead, beating back the pouring rain and floods of tears, she decides to keep going and finish the race. Bao Samneng was competing for her country in the Southeast Asian Games, which her country was hosting. The 20-year-old mother of one always loved running, even though she grew up with only one pair of shoes, no sport shirts, and could only run on dirt tracks. She's also struggled with her health, as she has anemia, or a lack of red blood cells, and actually was feeling weak on the day of her big race. Her trainer told her not to run, but she was determined to represent her country in this big regional competition, which was being hosted in the capital city, Pyeongchang. And that's why she didn't quit, even when the odds were all stacked against her. She says, I had the right to abandon the race, but first, I have a duty to represent Cambodia, so I did not give up. And seeing the video of her tearfully crossing the finish line and the torrential rain has made her a national hero. Showing that coming first isn't the only way to win hearts. And finally, let's see what the Lucky Dough Machine has for us this week. Step right up, step right up. Step right up. Right up. Have a go with the lucky dip machine. The lucky dip machine. What's it going to be today, eh? An oddball, no doubt. An oddball, no doubt. Oh, yes, this is an odd story about rumors. You know, as in not the truth, but just a wild speculation about something. Because that's what happened after last week's coronation of the UK's King Charles III, when loads of people began to speculate on social media, of course, that a rather square-faced older gentleman with very shaggy grey blonde hair, a very large moustache, and of course sunglasses, was not in fact a man at all, but instead was the Duchess of Sussex. Meghan Markle, the wife of the king's second son, Prince Harry. Yes, the internet went wild with rumors that she had put on a disguise to attend the coronation, despite having announced that she would not be attending the event with her husband. Alas, this is not true. None other than the Welsh composer Sir Carl Jenkins has come out to say that he is not a duchess in disguise, but a real man who had a real invite to attend the coronation as himself. He was invited because a song he composed based on an old Welsh folk song was to be played at the ceremony, which more than 18 million people tuned in to watch, including most likely the Duchess of Sussex, since she was not there in person, even in disguise. And it's time to wrap up the podcast with the, the top, top five facts heard today. today. Fab fact number one. According to a Spanish study, giraffes use simple math to make predictions. What other animals are known to have some basic math or counting abilities? Various primates, some fish, and bees. Fab fact number two. This is impressive as giraffes have quite small brains for mammals given their body size. They are the world's tallest living land animals. How tall can they grow? Up to 18 feet, or 5.5 meters. That's taller than three adult humans. Fab fact number three. Officials are stumped in the U.S. state of Oregon after cannibalistic Twilight Zone lancet fish wash ashore on the beaches of Oregon. Where is the Twilight Zone for this fish? The cold and dark midwater ocean depths are known as the Twilight Zone. Fab fact number four. Lancet fish are named after a lancet, which is what? A small, broad, two-edged surgical knife or blade with a sharp point. Fab fact number five. <laughs> 
Cambodian runner who was last place but refused to quit despite not feeling well and a massive downpour of rain is winning hearts all over the world. Where is Cambodia? Southeast Asia. And if you're an educator and want to test your kids' listening skills, then try the text version of this quiz online. Go to the Lucky Dip page of our website, newsypooloozy.com, that's P-O-O-L-O-O-Z-I, and let the kids take this quiz online or surprise them with an in-class pop quiz. A fun one. Be sure to tell them. And we are almost done for the week. Except we have our all-important shout-outs. Oh, yes, we do. You know who you are. First one from Apple Podcasts is from Clara Sandiger. Apologies, Clara, for taking a few weeks to read this out. Who wrote... Woohoo! I just listened to my first episode, and I love it. Oh, I thank you very much, Clara. Thank you. And we also got an email from Saria Lee, who said, in all caps, I love your podcast. It helps me sleep every night. I love y'all. Oh my gosh, we love you too, both of you. Oh, seriously, this makes our day. I would sing... Thank you. <clears throat> but Leela has banned me from singing on the podcast. <laughs> unless I tickle her. No, like no, 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 no. Oh, well. <laughs> but really, Clara and Saria, thank you so, 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 so much for these reviews. It really keeps us going. And for those who do send us these comments in emails, it's awesome if you're able to do a review for us too on whatever listening app you use because it helps other people find us. True. Or you could just tell a friend about us yourself. Well, there is that. Alrighty then, folks. We'll see you next week in the happy, splashy, giant, newsy Lucy. Headphone warning. <laughs> From the northwest coast of America, I'm Anna Kelly reporting for Newsy Pelosi. Let's try that one with less insanity. From the northwest coast of America, I'm Anna Kelly reporting for Newsy Pelosi. Yeah, stop. From the northwest. Wait, stop. Hold on, I'm gonna Wait. pause. I'm gonna pause. From the northwest coast of America, I'm Anna Kelly reporting for Newsy Pelosi. Okay, stop. <laughs>